Um, TK not getting ten million a year. TK will probably get that, if not even a little bit more. Um, I think he's probably going to be in that ten and a half range, um, ultimately. And I'm pretty sure it'll be with the Flyers. Um, they can't sign him until after July one, um, but I think that's I think that's coming. What was that last part you said? I think that's coming. That contract is coming. They're going to he's going to sign with the Flyers and it'll probably be in that 10 and a half range. Uh. Sorry, I just bad manners. We love Travis Konechny. All right, and the Philadelphia fan base loves Travis Konechny. 10 and a half million is insane. It's going to be the going rate, man. It's a it is a player. great contract for a team that is on the precipice of doing something in the playoffs. It's a great deal. For a rebuilding Philadelphia Flyers team, I, I don't see it. If you give him, they might do it. I mean, listen. The in fairness, the Flyers have overpaid other guys in the past. I like, we'll stand resolute that like the Nick Sealer deal. While he's a wonderful player, he didn't look the same after Walker was moved, and I still think that that was an overpay. Fine. If you ten give, and a half million, if you give him seven, Travis Connect me. Let's say you give him lot. seven years with the AAV at ten and a half million, right? What do you think players of his ilk are going to be making four or five years from now? Don't care, because this is the same kind of argument well, that you no, made it's about Rasmus kind of Ristolainen. It if is. you're not going to be good, if you're not going to be good until three years from now, right? Yeah. He'll be thirty. Okay, he's still in his prime. I mean, it's not like you get you turn thirty and all of a sudden you suck, right? I mean, so he's still in his prime at thirty. What is a player who puts up? 75 points a season worth with the salary cap going up and up and up and up each year. It's going to be worth that. It just is. And we, people are going to say it's insane now. And in the, in, if you're looking at it right now compared to what other people make, you're right. It seems insane, but the, but the reality of it is if you're, when you sign a long-term deal, the reason you're signing a long-term deal is not for the fact that, you're overpaying now, but for the fact that the money on against your cap down the line is actually going to be good for the team. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. That's the reason why it is. That's why, that's why you look at, you could sit there and say, he's a streaky player. You could sit there and say, you know, um, he's not a top line guy. He's a second line guy. Fine. You could say all those things, but the reality of it is we can bookmark this conversation. And then please somebody make somebody somebody one of you bookmark this conversation. Please, please, and, we'll clip this. And, and then three, four years from now, let's bring it back up and see what the what guys that have his production are making around the league. And you'll see it'll be this price. And they'll be like, oh, okay. Yes, again, and, and again, sinister. And only one team has won a cup paying a player $10 million. You're right. But that's you also gotta remember the last how much years, is the cap going up? That that you is remember, like when you, when you say it's going to keep going up and up and up every year. We've had multiple years of flat cap. Yeah. That's how much of a jump is there going to be next year and the year after and the year after? Because they've already negotiated the TV contract, so it's not like you have you're exponential see, money coming in off of that. So you're where, going, to going up a few million dollars a year. They owe they owe the players. They owe the players. The players went for four years without a without a capping without a real cap increase. You're expecting the NHL owners to say ah. Mea culpa, guys. We'll fix no, this. They have to. They're, they're going to have to because it's based off of it's based off the revenues. It's all it's all a mathematical equation. They have to do it. So, you know, I, it's yeah. You and I always see very different different landscapes, and and I don't know what it is because you're the older one. You're supposed to caution me against irrational and and reckless spending. But it's almost like you're the guy who feels the money burning a hole in his pocket and says, I have to spend this. And while I totally understand your idea of like, hey, in three years, that $10 million cap hit is going to be a smaller percentage of the cap. And that is fine. And that is fair. And that is just. I just come back around to, I think he's a really good player. I don't know if he's a really good player on a Uh, cup contending team. So my point is, my point is then. If you ultimately have to move away from Travis Konechny, right mm-hmm. now he's part of your your team and part of your core. He's you know one of part of your leadership group. You think he can be a guy that can be there with for your team when you're competitive. 
But if for some reason something like that changes over the course of time, the team is a little slower in developing, you don't get to where you want to get to, and you need to make some changes, moving that contract becomes easier because he because it's value for what the, the player is in his role around the league. That's that's why it's important to do that rather than try and lowball him and then you don't get what you want out of the guy. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, do we really want to take on that contract? You know what I'm saying? Like you, if you're not going longer term, it's going to be shorter term. Nobody's going to want to go. So let's say, let's just say, for example, let's just say, mm-hmm. for example, let's just play this game and I'll get to Vinny's question in a minute. But let's just say the Flyers say, screw that. We're not giving him ten and a half million. He's only yeah. worth about eight. Let's say he's only worth eight, eight and a half. But then then the, the uh, pushback from TK and his agency is going to be, well, then if that's what we have to settle for, we're not, we don't want a long-term deal. We want something short-term. So now they ask for three or four years. Okay. And that might sound great to you, right? It might it sound is. great. Okay. But the fact of the matter is, is that is someone going to take that contract off your hands in two years because – it doesn't you, it doesn't quite fit your timeline any longer and it's like well do we really want to pay that guy you know at this point and then he's going to leave because we don't have control because he's going to be a free agent and then you know oh now we're, not, we're going to trade for him okay maybe we trade for him for a year but then he's going to resign somewhere else but if you have that cost cert- you have that certainty on his contract and that those years of control on a player like that even if it's a little bit higher price it's more valuable to the team and so that's why you pay him you give him a higher AAV. That's why it works out that way. Now, so the, 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 my yeah, my my very simple contention on this is is as follows. I am fine conceptually with saying, "Hey, we think that Travis Konechny can be a thirty-plus goal scorer for the next five years," but we value him at eight, and it doesn't matter what the market might be in a few years. We value him at eight. He will he will be worth some draft capital. He'll be worth some capital of some sort. And it's not like he just goes away and and that's it. Like they would get something back, presumably a value for him. And then I would look and say like, look, if you do think that you're two or three years away, I'd rather see them get more things that they can use to hopefully put themselves in position, whether it is a draft pick that they intend on using or a draft pick that's for two years down the line that they can package together with some other assets and go after a guy that is more ready and that they think has a higher ceiling at that time. That's where I'm at. I think that if they re-sign Travis Konechny to eight and a half, nine million, you probably say, okay, and, and your case is totally fine. I don't like the idea of locking a guy up super long-term at 10 million because he could just as easily prove that like around that age 30 season in three years that, you know what, smaller guys, he plays a certain way, there's a diminishing return, and then you still have four years left, and he's no longer a 30-goal scorer, and then you go, this wasn't a great deal. I, I think he brings a lot. I think he brings good intangibles. I think he's a well-liked guy. Teams hate playing against him, all that. But I do think that at some point you have to make a determination. Are we going for it or are we not? Because if you're not, it does give you the wiggle room to say, hey, we're going to offer what we're going to offer, and if we don't get... If we can't come to a deal, this is still a very good player. And there are a lot of teams that would love to go out and get a 30-goal scorer and might actually give you assets that you could parlay together to go get something in a couple of years that that is also a known commodity. It's not – I know you and I usually disagree because you think like, oh, Russ, you want these draft picks and you know what they're going to become. If you have multiple firsts in the 2026 draft and there's a guy who's available like a Marner, a Marner-level guy who falls out of favor – or a team is ready to move on from, and they want to get younger, they want to get cheaper, there's your moment. Like, these guys come available every year. That's where I'm at. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I, I couldn't. You and I can disagree on it, and people in the comments are kind of going back and forth on who they think is right or wrong. But I, I just I, I feel like the Flyers too often put themselves in these positions where they go and they, they sign guys to long deals with the thought that, like, hey, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pay dividends. When is the last time the Flyers signed a guy to a long-term contract and didn't regret it? Like, didn't actively put themselves in a position where they have to try to eat money or, like, significant money on the back end of that deal? I can't think of one. Mm -hmm. What did they just sign Owen Tippett for? Eight years, right? Was it Mm -hmm. 864? Mm -hmm. Is that what it was? Travis Konechny's 
not worth what Owen Tippett's worth? Is that what we're saying? Is that what I'm we're saying? at? He can, be worth an, he can be worth an extra million. Well, if Jake Gensel is in conversations about having an eight by eight contract with Carolina, admittedly he is two years older, but an eight million dollar cap hit. I don't know. I probably would think that that's a stupid idea to sign him to as long of a deal as that as is being rumored there as well. So I'm not like I'm not a total hypocrite here. I just yeah. I'm not so Tip- sure, dude. Like that's I guess Tip- that's my point. Tip it is six is a uh, cap hit is six point two per per year. Is what okay. his hit is what his cap hit is. Um and he's two years younger, but he isn't yeah. a given quality like we know we know what Konechny is and Tippett had some good runs, but you don't know. Right. That's fair. I will concede Konechny's that. Connecting's connecting's a, a two time all star. Mm-hmm. I mean that there's that, Everybody that, gets that an comes. It, no, but, he's a good he's a good player. He's a good player. He is a good player. I'm I'm being there's a, a lot of teams that would like Travis Konechny. There's a lot of teams that would like Travis Konechny. Um, and he's making. Could you get a bidding Konechny's war going? Hold on. Like, could could you in theory get a bidding war going? Why though, would you want to risk that? For, Why for would him? you want to risk that? I'm saying if you and if if the Flyers okay, and his agent a... agree that they that they're not in the same ballpark, could you theoretically get a seriously like if if there are four or five teams that actively would love to go get a 30 goal scoring Travis Konechny? Like, wouldn't it finally put the Flyers in position to like have something of legitimate value to put on the trade market? Like, ser- like even when they no. traded Giroux, well, like okay, so there were have, two teams, but you you have something with legitimate value to put on the trade market, and it's a guy making the same, basically the same money as Konechny, and he's three years younger, just hasn't put up the numbers that Konechny's put up, and it's Joel Farabee. That's the guy that if you're He'll, gonna yeah. if you're gonna move somebody, that's the guy that I think is gonna get moved, right? That you're gonna move yeah. Farabee and get some value. I, I don't know. I don't know. We should get to, by the way, we have Vinit's uh, um, super chat. You had it up on the screen and then it disappeared. I'll pull it up. I do yeah. think, and you know what? And we, this, I think this is about as nice of a back and forth as you and I have had in quite a while, you know, and we, we've remained civil. Good for us. Maybe it's because we're getting older. Maybe it's because you're getting married this year. I don't that's, know. That's the reason why. But maybe you're getting soft in old age. Like, I don't know. I don't know. But, you know. All right, here we go. So Vinit. Uh, said LeBron said Gensel is in the talks about the eight by eight paying Konechny over nine million a year would be the worst move ever by Danny Briere. They're stacked at right wing. I, are, but are they stacked? Are they stacked? I mean, that's the that's what I keep going back to. I, you know, they have is it the position that they probably have the most players, right? But who are your right wings? You have Owen Tippett, who like we already, we just talked about, right? And you have Konechny. Okay, they're going to buy out Cam Atkinson, right? Um, are they? Yeah, I can't imagine. And nobody, I can't imagine. Amy's going to want a five point eight seven five million dollar cap hit of Columbus. Cam Atkinson next year at thirty four years old. He's he's cooked. He's toast. They're going to probably buy that out and get a little bit of little bit of cap relief, right? And you got and you got mm-hmm. Forster, okay. But Tyson Forster, nice player. But is is Tyson Forster a superstar, or is everybody just falling in love with Tyson Forster because he's twenty two and and is a prospecty type player who had a really nice rookie campaign, right? Like, so Maybe. where is your where are you stacked at right wing? That's what I, that's what I don't get. And to me, it's like okay, Konechny is your currently your best right wing. The, the, what's behind him is not as good as he is. And and so therefore to sit there and say we have all this other room to get we can get, we, have, we have more guys at this position, yeah you have more NHL caliber players, but I don't think you have players as good as Travis Konechny at right wing, in this you know in your lineup in your system it's just not there. I I, I don't know I, I to me it's 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 foolish to constantly be trading away talented players and retool and retool and retool. You're going back to the same old stuff over and over again with let's hope the young players develop let's hope this young guy develops let's hope this you gotta have you gotta have some veterans on the roster who are good players like if you're you're they're still in a rebuild and they are rebuilding and they're doing it what i believe is the right way okay but you you're going to need players like konechny to be part of that when you're good again you don't just suddenly have uh superstars that are growing. Like, I mean, all right, we think Mishkov's going to be a star player. Who else mm-hmm. in this system, who else in this Flyers organization currently is going to be a superstar type player? You don't have one. You really do. Oh. Who? 
who's going to be a superstar? Yeah. You don't have one. Okay. Yep. So while it's going to take time to continue to draft, hopefully get another guy like that or whatever and develop that player. Okay, fine. You need good players if you're going to be competitive. So who's the, who are your good players? Really good players. That's Travis Konechny. If you trade him for a draft pick or trade him for a prospect, you're crossing your fingers and hoping that those players that you're trading him for become something that's better than what he currently is. But it's also down the line. It's also way down the line. I, you can't. Or you package them. That's that's why I, I feel like you have this like binary look at it. And like there is actually a third path, which is you take those assets and, and you you put them together and you do go after a given commodity. I feel like that that's like the one thing that we, we just like never acknowledge. You can't go after a given commodity until you have the pieces in place to go after that commodity. That's what and that's what Jonesy has been yeah, saying since but, our but first. But then it's really not that different though. Like if if it's connect me at 10 million, so just, just play this out. Two years from now. Yeah. Two years from now, they have Travis connect me at 10 million. No, go three. So he'll be 30. He plays the style he plays. He will probably have a few injuries between now and three years from now. Oh, I mean, look, you're, pro you're just, I'm, I'm being fair. I'm not, I'm not saying he's going to like miss a season. I'm not saying like he's going to become a 15 goal scorer, but at his size, the style he plays three years from now, not, not the best. Even if he puts up 30 goal seasons, great. All right, so that that's where you are. At that point, if you're right about that contract being a bargain and all that, then you, you know, I guess in theory you could make a call at that point. You're probably gonna roll with him, but in theory, you could you could potentially entertain if if you haven't developed or drafted enough guys that are top level, then you say, hey, now we sell high at 30. Okay, it's entirely possible. The other version of this is you do move the, those pieces out and you say that, like, hey, three years from now, when you have the assets that you've accumulated over time. Again, if there's like a Marner ish kind of guy available, cause it happens every off season, maybe there's a guy that you think has higher upside and you're able to actually address that position, whatever the position is that you need at that point, because you feel like, all right, we have enough of these guys ready at that point. Like, I, I, I don't know. They don't have a, they don't have a one C they don't have a one D the goalie situation, while it was positive for a good chunk of the season with Sam Harrison, there are questions there. And yeah, I think that even with Fidotov, there are going to be questions. Yeah, and it's, it's it's irrelevant to me right now about goaltending because they have a lot of young guys that are goalies, and they, goalies take a little bit of time to develop. They have You have four guys in your system that you can take a chance on. I know Fedotov's older, sure. and, I, and I'm not certain that he's going to be the guy. I mean, but someone between Urson and Kolosov – and um, Zvregan and um, who's the other one that they drafted? Uh, why am I forgetting his name? Um, I don't remember his Canadian, name either. Canadian, know, Canadian kid. About. Oh, geez. Why am I forgetting his name? Not Bjornsson. I forget. Yeah, Carson Bjornsson. That's it. Thank you. Ah, see uh, that? Yes. Ah, yes. Ah, Russ, and he, the Rustache reached far <laughs> and wide, pulled up elite prospects without using hands, just reached into the internet, interwove itself in the world wide web, and pulled that name out like a tooth that had been rotted and decayed from years of terrible dental hygiene. <laughs> My point is, is that they have a lot of, a lot of prospects that are going to be developing at that position, right? And you only need one of them to hit. So yeah. they took a, taking a chance on a lot of them. If one of them hits, that's a success. But you're right. They don't have a number one center. They don't have a number one defenseman. They got to go in, in for those types of players first. And then when you do, either Travis Konechny is still playing to the level that can be conducive to working with them at a salary that will be appropriate for that type of player at that time, or you have not achieved what you've wanted to do and get those players. And then you trade Travis Konechny at a contract that is acceptable to other players or to other teams for that player. That's so I think that's why you sit there and say you do it because it gives them control over a veteran player who's good. I mean, that's it, to me, it makes sense.